What's up guys, Jam here. Today we'll be covering Amelia and Rom's bumpy master-servant relationship side story. Wow, that was a mouthful. Anyway, this side story will be safe for anime onlys. With that being said, let's get right into the side story. We open with Rom walking into the guest room without knocking. Rom is greeted with the sight of Amelia sitting in a chair in the middle of the room. Except, Amelia had a bucket on her head. That voice, is that you, Rom? Sorry to surprise you. Rom was utterly speechless. What is this, Amelia, to cover your head with a bucket in a place like this? Can you not tell just by looking? I can only imagine that this is Barusu's fault. You're kind of acting like this is really weird. Also, Subaru does have something to do with this whole bucket thing, but I'm keeping the secret from him. Please keep quiet about this. Barusu has something to do with this, but it's a secret from him? That's rather complicated, Amelia. Hmm. Alright, I'll explain. Off you go. Sensing Rom's growing frustration, Amelia slowly takes the bucket off. As far as Rom remembers, you were not afflicted with a perverse obsession with buckets. Yeah, it's not like I'm crazy about buckets either, but this bucket right here is my sensei, so that's why things ended up like this. Rom just stares at Amelia. This whole situation was so stupid it was making her head hurt. Um, I better explain from the start. Do you remember what happened this afternoon? Not that I really want you to. Are you referring to that singing that sounded like a bird dying? That's... what I'm talking about. Yeah, right. Amelia hung her head with a sad smile. Rom recalls what happened earlier today. Rom had been looking for Rem. While Rom was looking, she heard an extremely bizarre voice from the dining room. She assumed it was one of Barsu's terrible pranks, until... But what I actually found within that room was your unfortunate figure sincerely attempting to sing. Don't call it unfortunate. Although, I will admit that it was kind of horrible. Kind of? Really horrible. Are you happy now? You're so mean, Rom. Despite this, you are not discouraged. Does this mean you've suddenly become defiant in this short time? I don't know what kind of impression you have of me, but I haven't become defiant or anything. Nor do I even have time for that sort of thing. I'm burning up. Is that so? Yes, that's right. I'm burning up. I'm seriously on fire. Amelia's eyes were sparkling as she repeated herself. Rom lets out a deep sigh. It truly does seem to me that Barusu has had a hand in this. I'm not sure that's the case though. Well then, for what reason exactly are you burning up? Ah, you want to know? And with that, I shall return to the tale of the bucket. This must be quite the shock, isn't that right? I suppose so. It would be absurd if the bucket had no relation to this. Amelia showed off the bucket in her hands as she continued. Subaru told me about this, that there are some ways to correct t tone deafness. Please continue, without shame. And then he said the first step was to put a bucket over my head to confirm my tone deafness. I assumed that it was another one of his pranks at first, but that wasn't the case at all. Subaru was really trying to help me, so I figured I should do my best as well. You want to know what the connection is between tone deafness and buckets? Yes, absolutely. When you have a bucket over your head, the sound of your voice reverberating within would allow you to comprehend the extent of your tone deafness. If there is some other explanation, please elaborate. Rom, could it be that you actually knew what buckets could do all along? Well, Rom has been using buckets for quite some time after all. Rom sighs as this further proves how unreliable Amelia is, like the time she almost had her insignia stolen from her. So you have decided to practice on your own in order to correct your tone deafness, Amelia? And moreover, at this hour. Um, that's how it is. I mean, if I were to sing in my room, it would most likely be an inconvenience to everyone else. There's no one around this part of the building, so I thought it would be fine to sing here. Meaning, you did not expect Rom to come looking around here. Rom does not do this very frequently, however. Although, I do not think this is something one ought to go as far as to cut into their sleeping hours for. Even I can't say anything in response to that, but I ended up bothering Subaru and the others a whole lot today, so I want to do this properly. The reason everyone went along with my singing practice was for my sake, isn't that right? Not to correct my tone deafness, but to, um, how do I put this? To relax, is it? Right, to relax. It was really fun, but in all that fun, the tension ended up leaving me, so I wonder if that's how it was. Amelia had a faint smile as she spoke. Rom could not give her an accurate answer. However, she could make a guess. Amelia had been studying every single day to prepare for the royal selection. Everyone in the mansion knew that Amelia had been pushing herself too hard the past several days and that willpower of hers was going nowhere. So Subaru and Roswell were working together in secret to brighten Amelia's mood. Even though he is Barusu, to think he had fun conspiring with Lord Roswell. What a crafty little... Rom, your eyes kind of look super fierce right now. Are you okay? 
Yes, I am fine. I merely lost my cool for a moment. Well then. It's alright. Everyone came together to teach me how to relax properly. Now, while I'll be sure to remember that, I also want to be able to sing. Although it seems to me that having you sing was secondary to them. I know that, but I want both. Is it wrong to say that? Do you not think you have become greedier than you used to be, Amelia? Don't you know, Rom, that I'm actually trying to become the ruler of this country? Amelia's response caused Rom to smile. Not a wry smile or one of ridicule, but a rare smile from the bottom of her heart. Ah, you're smiling. Did I say something funny? I wonder. It's just, Rom's opinion of you has changed ever so slightly. Really? That makes me pretty happy then. But to give it your all despite your flaws, I cannot say I dislike it. Amelia, just like Rem, was giving it her all. Rom could not hate anyone who strived to overcome their shortcomings. Did you just say something? Amelia looked puzzled as she didn't understand Rom's murmur. Yes, I did say something. I was wondering if your rigorous training had produced any results. I improved quite a bit in the afternoon alone, but I've advanced even further beyond that now. Well then, please give it your all. Rom sat down on the guest room's unused bed. It ruffled the sheets a bit, but it didn't matter because Barusu had to fix them tomorrow anyway. Receiving Rom's signal and her gaze, Amelia looked a little tense just before she started singing. Her voice was slightly too shrill when she started, but it settled down soon enough. She was actually singing. Compared to earlier that day, Amelia's current advancement was very impressive to say the least. Amelia started burning up as she sang and swayed her shoulders, losing herself to her singing. Even Rom started closing her eyes and was devoting herself to the song before she knew it. Amelia had been singing the Sword Demon's Love Song. It was a very popular song that the songstress Lelina had performed at the mansion for them. While Amelia was nowhere near Lelina's level, her singing was not that bad. Once the song ended, Amelia with a big smile on her face turned to Rom. That is all. Your impressions, please. Yes. Nine points. You mean out of nine? You're quite audacious all of a sudden. I mean out of a hundred, of course. But I have gotten a little better, right? How many points would I have gotten when I first started? It is rather absurd that you would think that you would have gotten any points at all. It was that bad? But I'm sure a passing grade is not enough to satisfy you. I suppose so. I want to work harder and become better. Rom sighed and stood up. Very well, then let us do this every other day. You shall practice here only on a fixed schedule. Rom shall free up some time as well. You'll do this with me? It would be worrisome if there wasn't someone watching over you. That was what Rom truly felt. Of course she was also doing it for Roswell's sake, but even setting that aside, the song wasn't bad, she thought. Thank you, Rom. I'll do my best with you and Bucket Sensei. Please do not place Rom on the same level as that Bucket. And that sums up the Amelia and Rom's bumpy master-servant relationship side story. That was easily one of my favorite side stories. This adds so much more context to Rom devoting herself to helping Amelia in Arc 4. Not to mention, this adds so much more character to Amelia and Rom. We know that Rem feels inferior towards Rom. We don't really get any insight on how Rom feels about that or even if she knows about it. But when Rom compares Amelia and Rem for their hard work, it shows how much attention she truly pays even if it doesn't seem that obvious. Rom helping Amelia with her singing is also very wholesome. It's also funny because Amelia's songs in the anime are so good. So we have Rom and Bucket Sensei to thank for blessing us with Stay Alive and Door. With that being said, let me know what you think of the side story in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and I hope you all have a great day.